and thanks for joining in as we get a good drug picture of the indirect acting cholinergic agonists. Neostigmine and Donepresil are the indirect acting cholinergic agonists. We can get a good overview of the indirect acting cholinergic agonist by breaking down what that drug group means. The cholinergic agonist portion of it obviously means that it acts like acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is cholinergic. It acts like acetylcholine. The indirect portion of that, the indirect acting portion of that name is going to mean that it doesn't act on the receptors. What it does is actually acts on the enzyme that degrades the acetylcholine. And it binds to the active portion of that enzyme meaning that the acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft lasts a lot longer. The places that we use acetylcholine include the neuromuscular junction, we use it in the brain, and we also use it in the parasympathetic nervous system. Neostigmine is a drug that works primarily at the neuromuscular junction. Increasing the amount of acetylcholine in the neuromuscular junction is therefore valuable in people who have uh, myasthenia gravis. Meanwhile, donepezil is a drug that crosses the blood-brain barrier, and as such, it's good in people who have Alzheimer's disease. So let's take a closer look at these drugs. When acetylcholine is released into the synaptic cleft, it binds to the receptors and causes a response within a short period of time, or it's degraded. And the degradation occurs by an enzyme called acetylcholine esterase. The indirect acting cholinergic agonists reversibly inhibit that enzyme, leaving some acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft. Neostigmine is the indirect acting cholinergic agent that does not cross the blood-brain barrier very well. It is potentially useful where more acetylcholine is necessary in the neuromuscular junction. And myasthenia gravis is that kind of disorder. In myasthenia gravis, it's an autoimmune disorder, and the person's own immune system attacks the acetylcholine receptors in the neuromuscular junction. And as you could imagine, that's going to be very problematic, especially in the lungs, where if you don't have the ability to contract those muscles, you could die. Neostigmine increases the acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction, and that at least partly compensates for the decrease in the receptors, in the acetylcholine receptors. The other subset of indirect acting cholinergic agents, donepezil, does cross the blood-brain barrier, and it's used to treat Alzheimer's disease, which is a progressive loss of the acetylcholine-producing neurons and the target neurons in the brain. Donepezil even appears to delay the deterioration of cognition in people with Alzheimer's disease for about six months to a year in most people. Both neostigmine and donepezil have widespread effects and side effects throughout the body. And just to give you an example of how serious they can be, there's nerve gases that are irreversible indirect acting cholinergic agents. So they irreversibly bind to the acetylcholine esterase. These, of course, these drugs that we're talking about, of course, they reversibly bind to acetylcholine esterase, but nonetheless, there is potentially very dangerous side effects with these drugs. So 
In order to remember the actions and side effects of the acetylcholine esterase inhibitors, what you need to do is remember the actions of the parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and digest system. And you can use one of these diagrams to just recall each one of those. And it, starting at the, at the eyes, so the eyes are going to be constricted. We don't need a lot of light going into the eyes as we're just resting and digesting. But at the same time as we constrict the pupils, there's going to be a potential blurring of the eyes. There's going to be a, pen, a potential uh, decrease in uh, visual acuity during night. Uh, there's going to be a constriction of the bronchi. So these drugs are not going to be useful in asthmatics. They're going to be dangerous in asthmatic patients. It's going to slow the heart rate and the contractility of the heart, leading to a bradycardia, a heart block is a possibility, hypotension, even cardiac arrest is a possibility. The neostigmine and donepezil are going to stimulate the gastrointestinal tract, leading to all of the enzymes and all of the uh, acid. It's going to lead to an increase in the motility of the GIT, and that can lead to nausea, vomiting, uh, stomach cramps. And it is particularly problematic if it's combined with other things that could potentially be harmful to the stomach. Um, for instance, uh, non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs or aspirin, combined with that extra acid that's being released with these drugs, it's going to be potentially bad for people uh, developing peptic ulcers.